As I mentioned earlier, this particular type of edge rays is directional. So you've got a light cone, you've got a pivot point which then points exactly where that light cone is going to be applied. Another way in which you can cast light volumetrically is in an omnidirectional sense. So in other words, you can have a light object that just casts light everywhere and then whatever hits that light will then in this case cause shadows. The way that we apply this is by applying a texture onto the rays object. Now what I'm going to do is just to show you how it works is we're first going to go ahead and decrease the spread of the cone light to zero. Now what that means is the light is still there in the background but it's not effectively casting a cone inside of my scene. It's simply just the light being there. Now if we press escape to see the schematic we can see that there's the light and there is the rays node. If we switch back to the node bin you can see that we've got the actual textures of light. These light textures can be used with the lens flare tools that we have in action as well. In this case I'm going to be using the iris texture. So if I was to now drag this out and connect it onto the rays what effectively will happen is that the light will actually take on a true shape in 3D space. So now this light is a real bright object. You could use this for example if you need to put lights in lamps in, uh, in scenes or something like that but this could also be used in the case of creating volumetric lighting effects. The main point here is if I go now to the object menu and I select my light when I start moving around in position you can see how the volumetric lighting is casting itself everywhere inside my scene. So in other words this light is not directional it is omnidirectional it is happening everywhere. Now I did go ahead in the rays and decrease the spread of the light cone. If I wanted to mix the two together, the omnidirectional light plus the directional light, we can increase the spread and that then gives us the ability to actually have both happening in our scene at the same time. But what I want to do is simply just go ahead and just decrease the spread for the moment and I'd like to focus on the iris. If I don't see the iris menu inside of the UI, once again just make sure by pressing escape to see the schematic just make sure that that menu is selected. Inside the iris controls you can go ahead and start working with things for example like the scaling of the light, the intensity of the light and then there's a degree of options you can play with. For example the iris pattern that we're using is basically a polygon. We can go ahead change it to discs, we can change it to orbs for example that gives a really great lighting effect. You can also change it to caustics as well. The idea behind this type of texture or some of the lighting textures is that they are procedural. In other words they have got lots of settings to automatically generate themselves and generate different looks and feels and types that you could then have and also move in your scene giving you some amazing type of lighting effects that you can then work with. All of this can be animated, all of this could also for example be graded as well. So you can go ahead and really achieve some interesting type of volumetric looks. So this is the first example I'm showing you as to how you could use volumetric lighting inside of your scene. The next example that I'm going to have a look at is instead of focusing on volumetric lighting I'd like to focus on creating true edge rays through a surface. So you can see here we have an image with some colors on it, it says stained glassware and I'd like the stained glassware to actually have light coming through it as opposed to light wrapping around it which is what volumetric lighting normally does. In this scene just to show you if I press escape to see the schematic I've already got a camera, a basic light as well as a surface in the scene. So I'm going to go back to the node bin and under the relighting tab I'm going to bring up another light. Same thing as before I'm going to take this light and I'm going to push it back in 3D space. If I lift this light up so it's just sitting slightly above the layer and surface what we can do with it is go to the node bin and we'll drop the rays on it one more time. So you can see how the edge rays is being cast through this. That is the default behavior as to how it works and you can see there's the pivot which is then controlling how those rays are then being projected. But in this case I don't want the volumetric light to wrap around the object. I want the volumetric light to go through the object. So it's something slightly different. So you can see when we position the light behind a surface it's obviously being occluded so we do not see the light but in this case what we're going to do is if I switch to the object menu you can see here we have the rays option one more time. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the spread down as well as the intensity 
and we've got over here an option called Object Rays. If we increase the intensity, what will soon happen is this will start giving us the actual light being cast directly out of this. Now this works in conjunction with the spread. So global intensity is down, but if you increase the spread, you can see how it's now actually starting to cast light and the spread is coming through the actual geometry or the actual surface that you're casting through. So if I up the intensity here, you can see that if I was to now grab the light and move it around, we can see here that it's now casting the light directly through. So this is giving us edge rays as opposed to volumetric lighting, which is wrapping around. So this is actually using the colors within the surface. As the light hits the surface, it then passes through and creates the colors based on this. Once again, let's quickly do a bit of animation and a bit of work on this. So I want to go ahead and have the Omni light being shone through the scene so I don't want to have to worry about a directional cone and a directional light so once again we're going to go ahead and decrease the spread down to zero and go back to the schematic by pressing escape. If I take this raise node once again in the node bin we're going to go ahead and apply the iris texture onto this. So if I double click the iris texture and I press F4 to return back to the result we can see that it's now been created in the scene and straight away you'll notice how that iris is now being applying itself and because I've got the object rays option turned on the intensity of those rays it's now applying itself inside here. What we'll also do is by pressing escape and selecting the iris texture and once again if we press F4 to return back to the result view you can see I now have my iris controls down here inside the scene and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the basics menu and if we can start adjusting and working with this. So for example, if I was to push the intensity down and maybe push the scale slightly up, we can create some really nice looking rays that are then casting directly through our scene. So let's go ahead and maybe animate this. So if I start off on frame one, I want the position of the light to be here. If I then go to the last frame and I drag the light over to the side. So you can see very quickly how I've now created this lighting animation. In addition to this I want to animate the way the light comes up in the beginning and then goes down at the end. So the way we would animate it is by working with the length setting. So if I pull the length setting down to zero you can see obviously it disappears. Let's say for example we move about maybe 10 frames on, we push the length up full and then we go on to about 40 frames so 10 frames before the end I'll just set a keyframe and then at the very end we then bring the length back down to zero you can see how we've now created a edge rays type of effect with the volumetric lighting. We'll also maybe add a camera move into this. So what we'll do is we'll switch from the move mode down to orbit and with the orbit option on frame one I'm simply going to rotate the object so I have it that direction in the scene and then if I go to the very end I'm going to move it across so that we have it in this side. So if I now look at the animation you can see that we've got all this volumetric lighting effect combined with real 3D camera moves inside the scene giving us a really good dynamic and fantastic looking composite all using 3D compositing and the lighting within the true 3D environment.